Some people that start out on a big box bike realize when they start pushing themselves in our sport, their big box bike can't keep up with the rigors of the trail. Upgrading a big box bike is fun for some people like me. And so I show you how I took a big box bike and turned it into a single speed pump track bike reminiscent of a dirt jumper right after this. When I bought the Huffy Scout, I always had the plan to upgrade it and make it a pump track bike. With how much dirt jumpers are, I just couldn't swing the price of even a used dirt jumper to the CEO of Fat Guy Biking, aka the wife. Also, I ask if you enjoy my content, hit that like and subscribe. It really does motivate me to keep on creating these videos. My requirements for a pump track bike were a steel frame, aggressive geometry, 26 inch wheels and disc brakes. The Huffy hit on all these marks. Plus, I was able to get the whole bike for less than 130 bucks, brand new. Yeah, it doesn't have the best components or the best name, but I wanted something to turn heads. Plus, it reminded me of the fun times I had on a Huffy back when I was at my son's age. I'm hoping to bring back that fun and nostalgia on the pump track. So the first thing to go if you saw my review video on this bike was the handlebars and stem. I just didn't trust the two bolt stem and the narrow steel bars. I installed the stock stem and bars from the diamond back and installed the, my Rock Brothers pedals which are basically knockoff race face chesters. From day one I wanted to single speed this bike so I ordered a setup for a cassette on Amazon. Well, in my ignorance, I didn't realize that most big box bikes still use free wheels, so I had to order a single speed free wheel. I settled on the ACS Pause 4.1. All the reviews I read on it were good, plus it has great engagement and a great sound. I then ordered a cheap crank set and bottom bracket to get rid of the riveted 3x chainring in the front. Installing the new crank set and 32 tooth chain ring were rather straightforward. However, I needed to line up the rear free wheel with the chain ring up front. This was not an easy task, as I had to use specific spacers on the rear axle and then redish the rear wheel. This was the most complicated part of the whole build, and part that took the most time. Once that was done, I sized the chain. Unfortunately, I didn't get the Goldilocks gearing combination so I, I did have to go with a chain tensioner from the cassette single speed kit. The stock 80mm travel fork got replaced with a 29er Suntour XCR with 100mm of travel. Now do note it's advised from the manufacturer not to dirt jump on this fork. Since this is a pump track bike this isn't a concern for me. I swapped the tires for some Michelin Country Rock tires that I had from a project from years ago. These are some pretty fast rolling, fairly grippy tires on pavement and I will be upgrading them in the future, but are a good start at the moment. With everything that I did to this bike with stage one, there are a few holdouts that stayed. Just because I wanted to keep the cost of the bike down for stage one. One is the brakes. If you were to upgrade this bike, I would suggest that be one of the first things. The stock brakes are still pr pretty atrocious. The last thing that was swapped was the grips. Because I was going single speed, I had no use for the derailers and the grip shifters were gone so I just needed a set of grips to stand in. So I had some from the diamond bag that I threw on there. Now the bike is done for stage one. I think for being a Huffy it's a great looking ride. Is it really a dirt jumper? No, not really. And I would never subject it to the type of abuse of a, a dirt jumper would take. However, I do think it will make a great bike for the pump track, and the first initial ride went great. The bike handled the pump track amazingly, and I was picking up a lot more speed when pumping the track than I normally do. I was even getting air and taking off on a double that I would never get air on before. Not only that, but I was getting air in a lot more sections than I would before. So it seems to be a successful build right now. My first hour and a half ride with it was awesome. 
I still think this bike should have been single speed from the factory, as it puts down power pretty good, great with the 32 tooth in the front and the 16 tooth in the rear. It's a nice sweet spot that it's not too hard to pedal and allows you to get up to a decent speed. The steel frame does dampen a lot of the vibration that normally gets transferred to your body and for a start the bike did an amazing job. Now this is just the start of this build. There are th some things that are going to change and I'll keep you updated to the changes in the future. Now I think it's at a great place that it can show the potential of even a cheap Walmart bike on purpose of building it for something like a pump track. Now remember, it's not about the lemons life gives you, it's about the lemonade that you make with it. Coming up next time, pump tracks. Are they really that much fun or a big deal? Should you lobby to have one in your town or build one yourself? I'll let you decide.